This is the video introduction to experiment 12, build a burglar alarm circuit in the Mr. Circuit Basic Electronics Lab 1. This is the first of 19 practical circuits that you will build in this lab. By building these circuits, you are gaining valuable hands-on experience. The more of them that you build, the more competent you become. This particular circuit is very special because it can handle two types of sensors at the same time. It is sometimes referred to as a dual burglar alarm because it can handle both normally open circuits as well as normally closed circuits at the same time. For example, a normally closed circuit might be a foil glued to a glass surface and if the glass is broken, this burglar alarm circuit would react. An example of a normally open circuit would be a switch that is activated when a door is opened. The key component in this circuit is the SCR that you studied in experiment number seven. Remember that when an SCR is triggered into conduction, it doesn't shut off just by removing the small positive voltage that caused it to start conduct in the first place. When a door you are protecting with the normally open switch is opened, the switch closes, which sends a positive voltage to the gate of the SCR. The SCR conducts current to the alarm buzzer or bell, and the bell would keep ringing even if the door were closed again. You can see how this would be a good thing. The same goes for a normally closed circuit, like the one used to protect against the breaking of glass windows. If a window is broken, it breaks the foil, which is part of the normally closed circuit. That sets off the alarm. Even if the perpetrator tries to repair the break in the foil, the alarm continues to sound until the main power is shut off. Also, this circuit can be used to protect a car by connecting it to the dome light switch. When the door is opened by someone trying to break into the car, the alarm will sound and will not shut off even if they shut the door again. Now let's talk about assembling this circuit. The experiments 12 through 30 of this lab have several components and it's easy to make wiring mistakes. Here are some suggestions regarding building this circuit and the others on your solderless circuit board. Suggestion number one. Before you start installing any components on the solderless circuit board, gather all the components you need first. You can refer to the schematic and see that you will need nine jumper wires, an LED, one SCR, one diode, three resistors, one disk capacitor, one 9-volt battery snap, and a 9-volt battery. Gather the parts and lay them out carefully. Suggestion number two. Install the components, including the 9-volt battery snap, and then, after that, install all the jumper wires. If you do it this way, you will make fewer mistakes in wiring. Be especially mindful of polarity on the LED. Watch the long and the short lead. Polarity on the diode. Watch the gray band to be sure that it's on the correct side. Polarity of the battery snap. Watch the red and black leads. And polarity on the SCR to be sure the gate is on the correct side. Don't worry about polarity on resistors or the disk capacitor. They don't have polarity. Suggestion number three. Now, before you touch the battery to the snap, review your wiring by comparing the black squares on the pictorial to your actual solderless circuit board. For example, notice that the first vertical group of five holes has four wires in it. Look at your circuit board and be sure that it has four wires in it. Continue with all the other groups of five holes to be sure that they each have the correct amount of wires installed in them. Even with all this preparation, it is easy to make wiring mistakes. Now after all that, be sure that there are no bare wires or component leads touching that should not be touching. When you are sure that you have everything wired right, just touch the battery to the snap and see if you get the results you're expecting. Do not connect the battery to the snap, just touch it lightly. 
This will protect the battery from shorts. Now watch while I demonstrate how this burglar alarm circuit will work if your wiring is correct. Okay, here's the circuit all wired up very carefully. If I touch the normally open, it turns on. Take off the battery, it shuts off. Try it again, turns on. The alarm turns on when the normally open switch is closed or the normally closed switch is open. So if I close it back up, take the battery off, and it's off. But then when I open it up, it turns on again. There it is. Now it's your turn. Let's see if you can wire the circuit carefully and make it work like I did.